welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. Got this 99 Honda Accord that got dropped off today with a couple complaints. It's got no horn, no cruise, and the airbag lights on. And supposedly it happened all of a sudden and all at the same time. So let's have a look and see what we figure out. So that's the airbag light up there, a little red one, probably hard to see in the video, but it says SRS. We've got no horn, and short of driving now, I'll just assume she's right. We've got no cruise control. And like I say, supposedly it happened all at the same time, and I see our cruise button over here. Now you guys can't see it, but there's a cruise button over here. I see that doesn't uh, light up. Typically you would turn those on. And push some buttons here and she'd maintain the speed for you so uh, first thing first let's look at the uh, look at the horn it's probably the simplest circuit to look at here see what we figure out I got my sneaking suspicion is what's going on here but we'll go through the same process we always go through and take a look Okay, so underhood fuse box. We have a horn relay. We've got a fuse. Got a couple horns. We've got our steering wheel switch. So when we depress the switch, which is a normally open switch, it closes it to ground right here, and then it goes through what they would consider a cable reel, or what uh, we typically would call a clock spring. Oops which is this little guy right here, which is what I suspect our problem is simply because that's our common denominator here. We have the cruise control goes through the cable reel, the horn goes through the cable reel, and the airbag goes through the cable reel or the clock spring. So the easiest thing to do here, uh, we'll just go at it real quick. We'll pop the hood, we'll find this stuff, we'll just kind of bypass the relay real quick, make sure the horns have the ability to blow. And if they do, we'll go hopefully right here to the clock spring and see if we're, uh, you know, see if we either have a bad switch or we have a bad, uh, you know, clock spring, which is what I'm very suspicious of simply because she said she noticed all these problems happening at the same time. Here's the underhood fuse box. Uh, we just gotta find the one that's uh, it's a horn relay. So that's labeled, so we'll pop that out, just jump the relay, see if the horn blows, and uh, then we'll just run inside real quick. And actually, I mean we could, well we know, well, I don't know. Let's see if the see if the horn works first. Alright, so according to our diagram here, this one is our horn relay. I grab our relay uh, jumper there and we'll jump it and uh, hit it with a test light and see if the horn blows. Right, so I've got my little relay jumper here. It just basically allows us to uh, you know, bypass uh, the relay or it gets the relay up out of the box because this has those little covers on. It's kind of hard to get under there and, and just jump across to trigger the relay on. Um, you know, I'll, maybe I'll put a link in the video how relays work. I know you guys like to look at that sometime. I'll, I'll do that. There's a guy I like to watch that explains that really well. So I got my test light hooked to ground. We'll just go across these. One of these will trigger the relay. Obviously, that's the pin. So that tells us a lot of stuff. Our horn's good. The wiring to the horn is good. The fuse is good. Everything is good coming to the relay. Um, Except, you know, we may not have the trigger from the uh, from the horn button itself, so we still have to go in and test that. So if we come back here and look at our wiring diagram, what have we just learned? Uh, we learned that uh, from here, uh, well, from you know, the fuse is good, the relay is good, and the wiring to the horns is good, all those grounds, everything. So what we're concerned about at this point is 
Uh, we're concerned about our horn switch up to the clock spring and then from the clock spring out. Uh, I think that this is probably easy to get to. Perhaps if we pull the column covers off, we can, you know, essentially ground this wire, which uh, will send a signal to the pasture multiplex control unit and then from there to the horn relay and then hopefully the horns blow so this is probably going to be our next easiest thing to get to uh, so let's uh, go see if we can pop the column covers off see if we can see any of these we can locate any of these wires and uh, that'll uh, give us our next uh, quick test to do all right so like i said we're going to take and pull these column covers off they got some Phillips head screws in the bottom of them. We're gonna take these off and hopefully be able to see the clock spring. And better yet, hopefully be able to see the wires that we need to get to so we can do some more, more testing. Like I said, I'm really gonna kind of ignore the fact that the uh, uh, cruise doesn't work and the uh, airbag at this point, I guess simply because they're probably all related being that they all quit at the same time get these column covers to come undone here i might get a little screwdriver Yeah, if you listen to your customers good, uh, a lot of times they'll, they'll give you enough clues or you ask the right questions. They'll give you enough clues to lead you right to the problem. You know, particularly if they're observant enough to, you know, tell you that everything quit at the same time or whatever. So there's the top column half or top cover. Just got these little tabs over here. Let's see, how is this on the, uh, which way does this thing go? Yeah, this way here. Yeah, I was on the uh, driver's side here. It just I just reach up in there with a screwdriver and kind of, you know, kind of push that tab over and you get it to unlatch. Pull around and down. And there, that should be enough. Well, there's some wires there. Oh, there we go. So, I oh, want you guys can see. Let me move the camera so you can see better. But I think I see what we need to see. Right, right in here, I think we can see the wires that we need to get to. Okay, so this is the passenger side of the steering wheel, obviously. Yeah, you guys probably figure that out. So these are the wires coming out of our clock spring. Got a light green and black, red and blue, uh, all light green with traces. And if you remember right, let me, let me zoom in so you can see what's going on here. So that's, uh, I know this light is bright, but I need to be able to see. Hopefully you guys can see that good. Um, the light green with blue was the ground wire that came from our horn switch. So it goes from our horn switch, it glow, goes through this uh, clock spring here, and then it goes um, from here to the multiplex unit, from the multiplex unit to the relay. Uh, and on the relay, if you remember, we took our test light we grounded our test light, we triggered the relay, and like I said, I'll put a link in the description how relays work so you can understand what we were doing there. So theoretically, we could do the same thing here. We wanna send you know, a ground signal, just like we would if we were pushing the horn to our multiplex unit, and then it will take it from there. So what I've done is I've got our scope on a rope, I've got this hooked to a ground, and technically, if our ground's good, on our, on our uh, test light here, when we go into this wire, if everything's good from here out, we should blow the horn. So, yep. So that's good. So the next step, so that, that tells us a lot. We've just narrowed down our problem to a section of wire about yay big. And unfortunately, there's nothing more we can do uh, testing wise, short of pulling the airbag out because our horn switch is in there. Um, so that's the next thing uh, we're on, you know, if we take our, our clock spring and we look at it as two halves, you know, you got your, your first half of the wiring and your second half of the wiring. And we can see the second half because essentially all your clock spring is, is, um, 
you know, it's it pretty much like a reel, you know, just like it stated in that wire diagram, you've got, you've got to be able to turn your steering wheel and use your buttons and your horn and whatever other accessories around your steering wheel. And they must go through what we, what we commonly refer to as a clock spring. And basically um, that just allows your steering wheel to be turned, you know, left and right. And it's, you know, essentially a, a reel of wires that is able to wind and unwind each time you turn your steering wheel. Now back in the olden days, we had, uh, you know, like contact plates with, you know, it was just basically like a, you know, plastic plate and it had, uh, you know, copper rings around it and we actually had fingers that touched it, you know, very similar to what you would find on a, uh, like a sending unit or a, a potentiometer, you know, it always made that contact and that was commonly used, you know, for horn switches and stuff, but as cars become more complex, uh, you know, particularly with, you know, different, different types of buttons and switches and radio controls and, uh, all that stuff on there. We, now we need more wires, uh, you know, more wires, I think, than you could fit on a contact plate. Uh, and I think it's a little bit more reliable than a contact plate. Um, so that's, that's kind of the long and short of how a, how a clock spring works. Um, if, if this one ends up being bad, obviously we're going to get a new one and maybe we can demonstrate that a little bit more, um, Oh, flashlight's going dead. When we uh, when we get that out, so I, I hope that I hope that helps for those of you that don't know. But hopefully this one's bad, and we're able to you know able to get the job to change it, and we can show you what's uh, what's up. I don't know if I mentioned it with all the babbling, but I need to. Uh, what we need to do now is like I said, I don't. Hopefully I explained it. We need to we need to test the horn button basically. We need to take the airbag off to get to it. So that's what I want to look at. I don't know what holds the airbag in. Um, looks like we got a couple little covers here we got to take off. Looks like there's a Torx bit in there. So, have to turn the key on here. So we don't have to listen to that beeping. Got another cover up here. Another Torx bit there, so let me get a Torx bit we'll take and uh, pull this airbag module out and uh, we'll check the horn button which is usually built right into them and uh, take it from there. I hope I'm explaining myself good enough it is I want to make excuses get towards the end of the day running out of steam a zillion things going on still I need to get done I thought this would be a cool uh, video hopefully if it is what I think it is which I, I suspect the clock spring is bad but we don't want to assume oh shoot I should turn the key back on we don't want to assume we want to test because that's always the best thing to do <clears throat> we'll get this airbag out so we can check this Check this clock screen. I see there's another cover right here. Oh, no, oh, airbag's out, never mind. Okay. There's our horn button. That must be our horn button here. Let me um, get this unplugged. Once you get the airbag back like this, so unplug it, just you gotta pull up on this here you unhook that there and that'll unhook your airbag but the single red wire it must be it must be our horn button and that's behind this little plastic cover here so we got to kind of take this off to get to what appears to be another connector so we'll get that off oops Camera's probably at a bad angle. I'm sorry, but I gotta, I gotta sit in the seat. <laughs> okay, so this appears to be our wire, a wire holder. Yep, there's our airbag connector. So we can take our airbag connector, our horn connector. This is where our horn button plugs in. Oh, that's kind of neat. It's got a little double male thing here. 
So you can either just depress the tab and pull it out. Well, that's good. Now we've got this airbag out. Set that to the side. Now we can properly test our clock switch, or our clock spring, because what we can do, we'll hook the battery back up and uh, we can just take our test light and ground this. If the horn does not blow, then we know our clock spring is bad, but if our horn blows, then we know that potentially our switch is bad. So let's see what we got. Battery's hooked back up. Got the scope on a rope. Got it grounded, nothing's happening. So let's go back down where we were. I'll go back on that one wire. So that wire's good. Sorry if I saw it's the back of my head. And this here is the same wire, and that's no good. There's definitive proof that our clock reel is no good. There's one last test that we could do if we want to be 100% definitive. We could test this uh, cruise control switch too. Uh, so I looked on the wiring diagram. Uh, Basically, the, this switch makes continuity across itself. We got pins one, two, and three. So if we, and that's what we're gonna do with our meter, we're just gonna take and check the continuity across this switch. And uh, I, I, like I said, I looked on the wire diagram to see what was what. So technically, if we come across pins one and three, and we press the set button, we should have continuity, uh, which we do. And then I believe it was one in pin one and pin two or continuity for the uh, resume feature. You can see we have that there. And then the cancel button, when you press that, that runs through a series of diodes uh, through both of these, um, both pins two and three here. So I've got it set up on a diode function uh, so we can send a little voltage through it and uh, check the diode here. got to know if you're on the anode side or the cathode side I guess or something fancy like that so we got to switch our leads around here yeah almost we can see by the meter that the switches clearly work the diodes are good on both uh, both sides of that wire uh, so we know that our switches are good um, we can run this same test on the output of the clock spring and that'll uh, give us our 100% definitive proof. Yes, the clock spring is bad, or uh, you know, no, the clock spring's good. We just, it's bad in the sense that it's only bad for the horn, and we got other cruise problems. But I suspect, like I said in the beginning, that uh, we've got a bad clock spring. But it's always best to test. So the best way to test this cruise switch is essentially the same same way we tested it up here at the cruise buttons. I've uh, just got our uh, meter here set up and we're going to come down and I'm going to probe into these wires that are uh, the one looks like light green or red, light green with black. I got that in there. One of them should be, um, you know, one of the, one of these buttons or the other, but you can see that, you know, pushing this does nothing. We've got you know 2,000 some ohms of resistance on it now because the wires are still hooked to the to the cruise control module on the other end uh, which this reading is redundant I'll go to the next wire in we'll probe, probe that oh gosh hang on here yeah we got 980 ohms almost a thousand ohms on this you know, again, no change, uh, and the reason we have resistance on that, again, like I say, is because it's hooked to uh, the cruise module, which we could just as easily probably unplug this and just do a straight through continuity test. Uh, the pins are way up in there. Oh, probably all you guys see is the top of my head, but the pins are way up in there. Let's see if I can see one. There, I think I'm touching one there. You can see we're open circuit, you know, I hope you can see that, it's kind of hard to film in here. But I guess the fact of the matter is, is that there, there is no change, there's no current going through the clock spring. So that proves it, that's 110% now, that'll fix the cruise, 
that will fix the horn and we can only assume at this point it'll fix the airbag I don't see any sense in going any further other than to make a phone call see if we can get a clock spring call the customer and uh, make sure it's a the job they want to do which I assume it is and we'll get this uh, thing pulled apart here and get it fixed up okay we're back again uh, we left off diagnosing the clock spring I apologize if this video is not turning out good it's been extremely hectic here today and and I hate starting a project and not being able to finish it so usually if I commit to a video we just go through with it um, so if I seem a little it's because I am <laughs> just had a lot going on it's almost the end of the day I started this way too late uh, at any rate I found a clock spring and uh, oddly enough I'm wearing my Wells shirt today so that's pretty cool huh uh, so I've got this uh, clock spring from Wells and uh, here that is and here's what they look like so they usually come with a uh, tape or in this case it's got like a little yellow grenade pin in it and what that does is that locks it in the forward position um, because if you can envision it and what we'll do is we'll smash the old one apart when we're done because that'll make us feel better there should be like a wind of cable in there uh, or like a, you know, almost like a tape wire and and like I mentioned you know this allows you to rotate your steering wheel and I'll demonstrate this on the uh, on the old one uh, that way I don't break the new one um, and um, yeah gosh I am so losing my train of thought but yeah at any rate so this allows the steering wheel to turn and, and rotate and allows all the other functions to pass through you know in these wires and you know right out this plug on the back uh, so we've got uh, what do we got here we've got our cruise we've got our horn we've got our uh, we got airbag all that business and in a lot of cases on some cars I mean there's a ton of features on the steering wheel and this this allows that to happen you know allows everything to rotate and and make the magic so that's what this looks like um, we're gonna take and uh, we obviously we got to pull the steering wheel off to do it so uh, we're going to grab the steering wheel puller, we're going to buzz this off and, and just get this job taken care of. Some days I feel like a madman. I don't know if this steering wheel has got a keyway in it or not. If it doesn't, you got to be careful. You yank these things off and all of a sudden you can put it on any which way but loose. Seems like I'd go get a battery. You know what, I'm going to get a paint marker because I don't see a unique tooth on this thing. I want to make sure I put it back on straight so I'm going to mark this with a paint marker before we pop it and uh, that way there we know it's gonna gonna be right and I'm gonna get a battery for the flashlight. Got a battery. So like I said I'm gonna take and mark the steering wheel and I'm gonna mark the steering shaft so I can put it back together on the exact spine in which I took it apart on. Most steering wheels and such are, are keyweight or if they're spine, you know, like this, which most are, they'll have like a double spine so you can't really, uh, can't really screw it up. Sometimes you can wiggle them and they'll pop loose. We're going to take and take this off. This is what held all the wires. Hopefully we can remember that little road map. It's been a little while. Um, oh, I grabbed it right here. steering wheel puller. See if we can't find the stuff to get this uh, popped off there. Probably metric. That feels good. That, that, this. Give it a little tug. Oh, I think I had time to breathe today. It's been chaos. I'm trying to stay caught up. And Oh, I just put that on backwards. Why did they make one side of this thing tapered? I don't know. I always put it together backwards. Well, yeah, it's been pretty silly around here as far as trying to stay caught up in work. I sure could use about four or five extra mechanics at times, it seems. So 
So if any of you are sitting home with nothing to do and you live uh, close by, stop in. I'll find something for you. here is too big to go in and push on the center of the wheel so I tell you what let's stick the bolt back in there just a couple of threads and we'll push on the head of the bolt all you gotta do is pop these things and they come undone so more one way to skin a cat There she is. The baby is born. Anyhow, I don't know if your guys' shops are busy. I know quite a few working in shops. It's always pretty hectic around this place. Summer, winter, spring, fall. All right, there's no reason we can't pull it off. Off she comes. Okay. There it is. That's something you want to have to drive down the road. So here's our clock spring, and you can see, you know, you can rotate anyway. So if you got in here, if this, uh, you know, like the one from Wells, it's got the little grenade pin in it. If that wasn't in there, you know, when they shipped it, you know, the guy at the parts store, he could be just sitting here playing roundabout, you know, ring around the rosy or something, and, you know, eventually you're just going to run out of cable and break it. What we will do is unscrew this. I already got it unplugged. Except for that wire. See, I lied to you, I just tricked you. It goes all the way down, all the way downtown. It goes way in a dash, which must be, must be this one. So that goes under there. We're gonna have to go under there and unhook that. That's part of the airbag, or that is the airbag. The other half. Got too much junk in here. Just reach that. It's up in a little bracket one. Get it out of its bracket and slide it back. Same type of connector as what was in the hood or under the behind the steering wheel. One of them pushy jobbies. I wonder if we could uh we could probably break it apart, have a look on the inside, see if the wire is actually physically broken. Here we go. Here's a screwdriver. It's always fun destroying things. Boop! Heads up. Watch out. Safety glasses. So you take that off, it looks like. Oh, look at that. And here's what's inside. It's like a slinky. Let's see if we can find where it broke. Looks like possibly right there. Pull this out. So you can see where it's got a pretty good kink in it. Right there. Or it might have been just had a little, because this was down in there like this. Of course this was wound up around there, but it appears that it has, has a pretty good kink in it right there. We could probably take a razor blade and open that up and have a, have a real good look, because I don't see 
any other kinks in it. Yeah, looks good otherwise. So we'll do that, we'll get this job fixed and we'll see if we can't knife that open a little bit right there, but that's where I suspect the break is just because that's such a sharp bend. You know, when you get a little, you get a little TP like that, it's gotta be broke underneath there. We'll see if we can't razor blade some of this stuff off. Anyhow, out with the old, in with the new. So we'll take our clock spring, our new one, get it stuck on there. You gotta remember when we took our steering wheel off, the steering wheel was locked and it was tipped a little bit to the left, so we'll initially turn this a smidge to the left. Call it good. It's always uh, fascinating to me, you take them things apart, you know, and there's like, seems like, you know, 20 feet of wire in there. But if you're ever doing anything on a steering column, you know, you read the directions, it tells you when you unhook it, you know, don't turn it more than half a revolution and Seems like there's enough wire in there, you could turn it 10 times, it wouldn't break it, but what do I know? So pull out the grenade pin. That allows us to turn. We're not gonna sit here and play ring around Rosie with it, but we're gonna turn it just a smidge to the left. Let's take and plug our wires back in. Got that one there. Got the one here for our airbag. Get that baby locked and loaded. I'll stick it back up in its little white bracket under there it goes in. That's clicked in. Grab our steering wheel. Now these, you got these two little, these little pegs that stick out on it. I threw the old one out there. Well, those two little pegs got to come through these pegs on the steering wheel because when you turn your wheel, it hits these pegs and that's what rotates the, the clock spring. So we'll get those lined up. We got to line up our white dot. There it is. Put that back together. Oh Make sure the steering wheel's on there snug. So we gotta put this piece back in and start to uh, Getting this all wired up the way it's supposed to be. Oh, well, you know what? Boy, good thing we didn't set fire to this because we need this little piece here. The little male half of our horn switch. It's like a little female to female adapter thing here. Click that in. Because that ran around the back side of this. I do remember that much. I don't know much, but I know that. So that set her on the back side. This one went in that direction, this one went in that direction. All right, I think we're in the home stretch. You know what, we really can't, uh, really can't screw that down yet because we've got to get to the back side of this horn Let's just see, yeah. Yeah, we won't be able to. Ah, oh, darn it. Now we kind of mock these up where they need to go. Get our clips in there like so. Get our bag in there like so. Now what we've got to do is we've actually got to put our airbag in before we can move this and finalize where the horn wire here goes. Uh, because that went, uh, oops, sorry, I'm going to flip in the video again, up and around and, you know, in here like that, along with the other one. So we got to get that in first. Grab our 
horn. Get that clicked in. See if we can't uh, remember which way that went. So that locks in there. Alright, all them wires clicking there. So now, with that plugged in, we can screw that plastic wire retainer back on. left hand to work. Make sure you just run all the wires back through that, you know, this plastic wire holder too. You don't want them getting all jammed up in here behind the airbag. Now that we've got that done, Cross your fingers there's no stray voltage on this little guy so you don't blow up and die. Be quick though, let me tell you. Like, poof, you're done. <laughs> then we gotta clip that back under there. Last but not least, that's got a little retainer that sits in too. I'll show you that so you can see what that looks like. And that's what it looks like right before you put the airbag in. That little yellow one down at the bottom has got to go under that white uh, little catch there. Gotta be careful with the Hondas, they got all the shrapnel in them. Well, I imagine any airbag with the metal bracket side facing towards you exploding in your face wouldn't be a whole lot of fun. No matter what brand it is, in my opinion. Get the, get the screws put back in it. And Torx bits here, whatever you want, Torx fasteners. And we'll see if the horn blows. If the horn blows, we'll assume everything else works. But of course, we'll take it for a ride to be sure. Another telltale sign is that the airbag light turns off. I didn't check codes in it, could have, these Honda Civics have a tendency to have codes for the seatbelt switches, that's pretty common. That's a lifetime warranty too, you got a problem with a seatbelt switch in your Civic, the Honda garage will fix it for free, which is really cool. Okay, no reason we can't uh, hook the battery up. I see the airbag light's still on. Uh, we better plug our scanner into it. We might have to reset that or something. Huh? Let's see what we have in there for airbag. A lot of airbag codes are self self resetting. You know, once a problem is corrected. Not always, I guess. Like I said, this could have multiple issues too. No current codes. Uh, history codes, uh, which are either ones that we've caused or ones that were caused by the uh, spring band broke. So we'll just clear the codes out of here. All right, codes are cleared. Just double check. No current codes. No history codes. And voila, our light is now off. Seatbelt light is all, but no more airbag light. This key's a pisser. So you can see it, uh, well, it doesn't even, I think what thing doesn't even come out for a bulb check now, or what? Well, right, there it is, up the top corner. There it goes, beautiful. Well, that's good. There's two problems fixed. Um, I tell you, before we get too hot wild here with this thing, put it together, we'll take her for a little shimmy down the road. It's almost quitting time. 
not for me, but for the office help. And if I, uh, I'll just go for a quick test drive before she leaves. Get our VTEC on. All right, so we are going 40. So let's see if we can set the cruise. And the cruise control has set. The horn blows and the airbag lights off. You can see the cruise light is on on the dash. We'll try the resume Excel feature. So that works, the cancel button works, and the set button works. All right, viewers, we made it back to the shop. Everything works, it's all confirmed. We got the cruise, we got the airbag, we got the horn. Now we just finished putting it back together here. And I think everybody will be happy. I mentioned today was a hectic day, super hectic, and sometimes it's difficult shooting a video or attempting to shoot a video and trying to, you know, really trying to explain stuff and, you know, particularly in a situation like this, you know, you've got this, you've got this video with, or this car with like a ton of, of, um, you know, different aspects that we could look at, you know, we're playing with switches. You know, the switch has a diode in it, you know, the, the clock spring, you know, there's so many different different little areas that we could explore. You know, you could take this one car and turn it into, you know, like 50 different videos on different things here. I should probably quit talking and figure out how this goes together. Oops, I missed the back one. Um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, there we go. So it's kind of hard to figure out what to, you know, what to skip over, what not to skip over, and you know what to, you know, what we should learn. I mean, so I apologize if I skip over things or I don't explain things clearly, and that's simply, simply because it's you know a time restraint. Uh, you know, we can't go into really in depth detail on every every single item which kind of kind of stinks cuz it would be nice to but it's just not practical so um i thought before of having like little like little mini series of like you know basic testing that way i can refer to my own videos instead of other people's videos but there you know frankly there's a lot of people on youtube that do great jobs or, or you know really great a really great job uh explaining different things you know there's a lot of you know, where they'll test like individual, you know, subcomponents, I guess, if you will, of a specific system. And, you know, it can relate to multiple things, you know, like that one, you know, video clip, like I say, I'll put up here of relays, you know, that uh, guy that does that, you know, he does a great job with other electrical stuff. And just like, you know, um, you know, a lot of channels do. And so sometimes it's easier just to refer to somebody else's work uh, because they do a great job and there's no sense in, you know, just doing that all over and, uh, or just making the same video, but I hope you understand a little bit more about the clock spring and its function. Now let's go test that old one real quick and see if that's where the brake is in it. And uh, that'll be kind of a, you know, kind of a neat thing to look at. So here's the old clock spring. So instead of trying to peel the insulation back, let's just take the part that I suspect is bad. We'll cut it out. That's the part that I suspect is bad just from visual inspection. And uh, we'll see if we can't test the continuity, you know, from one end to the next. 
because I don't think this stuff breaks real easy. I don't think we can give it just a tug test. But that's where I suspect it's definitely broke. And just to prove that that theory will work, let's take a, what I guess is a known good section and we'll see if we can't hit this up with our meter here and see if it's any good. Let's see if we can't expose some bare cable on here. Oops. Without losing a digit. This uh, coating they put on these things is pretty solid. And remember, if you're ever using a razor blade or anything like that, always cut towards your buddy and not your body. I'm going to see if I can't dig some of this open here. There we go. The old scratch method. It's like playing lotto. That seems to work. That'll get us where we need to be. There. We'll test our known good. So that's proof of concept. That works. Now we'll test our what I suspect is the bad one. Nothing. 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 Ah, one good one. I don't know what wire that was, but out of the, uh, how many is there? One, two, three, and three to six. So out of the six wires, there's one one good wire in that whole little bunch. I don't know if we can scrape it off to have a look at the, have a look at the brake, but is hopefully you can see it let me see can you see it hopefully I don't know I'm not really a photographer but there it is it's clearly broken the test showed us and like I say seeing the cable in the car and seeing it have that hard peak in it like that that's usually an indicator that it broke sometimes they're actually physically broke because if you can envision it you know if, if that piece was stuck somewhere is jammed up every time you turn the wheel you know it did this number well, eventually it's just going to break, you know. Cool. All right, viewers, that's it. I'm going to wrap this one up. We're able to actually see the broken part, uh, which is always fun, you know, particularly when you're just using a meter and, you know, sometimes you can't actually physically see stuff. But uh, in this case, we were able to see what we thought was a suspect area in the wire and then uh, just use our meter to test it out. And uh, yeah, so I hope that you were able to understand a little bit more about the clock spring and what it does and its function. Um, really not much more I can say on it. Uh, I was in a, a tad bit of a hurry making this video and I hope it turns out well <laughs> because I really wanted to do one. We, we don't do, I uh, don't have many videos on airbags and uh, or in clock springs for that matter. I don't have any I think so it's kind of a first one and, and to see like those steering wheel buttons and stuff quit which is pretty common you know we deal with it you know multiple times throughout the year you get somebody comes in that you know, the radio controls don't work or, um, you know, cruise, horn, you know, whatever. There's a host of different uh, items on these steering wheels nowadays. So uh, it's not uncommon and clock springs are in most every make and model and they all function the same way. Or at least every one I've ever ran across uh, works in the same same manner and they, they look the same. So it's uh, very, very common. Um, at any rate, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, I would just ask that you do or consider subscribing if you want to stay up to date with our latest videos and publications that we put out almost weekly, uh, or I try to, depending on our workload here at the shop. <clears throat> uh, like us on Facebook. You can find us too on Google Plus if you want to connect with us socially there. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.